little econ 101, right? Let's just take the big look at it. First rule of economics, people do what you pay them to do. Right? Second rule of economics, people do exactly what you pay them to do. They really notice what it is. I'm sure that all of you know exactly what could get you fired with some detail, and you know exactly what you could do in your jobs to really advance in your jobs, get better at it, make sure of a promotion, make sure they keep you on. You're very, very clear on that. Well, so is everyone in the healthcare system. So are the doctors, the nurses, the hospitals, the device manufacturers, the pharmaceutical manufacturers. They're very clear on what we're paying them to do. If we're not getting the results that we want, it's because we're not clear what we're paying them to do. So, Let's look at healthcare econ 101. Now, traditional economics, you start with a buyer and a seller. I want to buy a rug. I go to the marketplace. There's all these guys selling rugs. I haggle with them. If his price is too high, his quality is too low, I go to this guy over here. We come to some kind of agreement, right? No problem. So the market is, is kind of, is what people talk about, a, a free market where it's kind of self-leveling. We arrive at what the actual value of that rug is in this market at this time. Well, what happens in, when you have an in insurance-supported fee-for-service system? See, it actually names what we're paying them for. When I go to a restaurant, am I paying someone to fry things or to put ice in them? Or no, I'm paying for a meal. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they do back there to prepare it. But a lot of them, I don't even know how they do it, but I'm paying for a meal. This, this is not what we're doing, we're paying fee for service. And what happens in that fee for service system? Well, the first thing is the buyer gets split in two. The, inst the entity that's paying for it becomes different from whoever it is that's choosing it. Whoever's saying, yes, we need an MRI here, we need a new hip, we need, is not the person who is actually paying for that an insurance-supported fee-for-service system. But there's something, there's another complication. Who's doing the choosing? It's the patient and the provider together. My doctor and I are doing the choosing, and someone else is paying for it, or at least paying for most of it. But there's another complication of this, and watch this. The seller is also the provider. So the doctor is also a salesman in the sense that they are selling their time, they're doing fee for service, and they're helping me make the choices. So the usual feedback loops of a free market system are not there. A lot of these changes we're seeing in the insurance system are attempts to put at least some of that feedback loop back in so that the person making the decision have at least some of the payment. They, they have to do some of the payment themselves so that we begin to make rational economic decisions instead of just making them up out of thin air with the advice of the people who actually are going to do the service for us. So it's a very complicated problem. We've tried to control costs the entire time. We've been in healthcare for 30 years. And I started about the time that they began trying to do various cost controls. And basically, these cost controls have not worked. There is no evidence that we have controlled costs at all over all these years. So what cost control has looked like over those many years has been various, lots of different ways of controlling unit costs. We will only pay you so much to see a patient. We will only pay you so much for this drug. What happens, suppose you're selling TVs. What happens if the market dictates in some way that the the amount you can charge for this TV is depressed. You can't charge as much. What are you going to do? Sell more. Sell more. You're going to make it up on volume. What's the other thing you're going to do? You're going to upsell. You, ma'am, do not look like the type of person who could use a mere TV. You need a home entertainment system. Five-sided sound, you know. We got, we got base cabinets the size of a minibus for you. You know, and you go out, you paid like $5,800 for this huge thing. Does that sound like something we've done in healthcare? Now, many of the new things that we can do that we couldn't do 20, 30 years ago are very helpful, but not all of them. Some of them are not. And we don't really have a mechanism in place for saying what is helpful and what's not. 
So as we move into this new healthcare economics, what we're going to see more and more is an attempt to control system costs. Now think about that. The executives of the companies that you work in, the healthcare executives, are being asked to do something they have no experience in doing, they have no training in it, they, they barely know what it means. Uh, and they have difficulty seeing their way from where they sit that they could do this, controlling system costs. 